full Monday session. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, thank you for this invitation to be transformed in your presence, mind, body, and soul. On this Monday evening of Holy Week, as we gather together to seek the desire to be filled with your light and word through Father Malusi as you calm our minds, fill us with hope, grant us patience and understanding and guide our thoughts to listen so that our actions will bring you glory. May your servant's powerful words open our minds to lead us in your direction. Open our eyes to see the opportunities around us to serve you. Focus our minds, soften our hearts, and continue reminding us of your promises. Strengthen us and fill us with your peace. Thank you for blessing us with your faithful servant whom you have sent to encourage us. May his words ignite a burning desire within us and keep us grounded in faith and belief. Amen. So we are indeed a blessed parish to have Father Malusi yet again. And truthfully, Father Malusi needs no introduction because an avid reader is always readily available to transport you on a mind-blowing journey. Father Malusi. Thank you so much. Uh, now, after that powerful prayer, you've just set the bar high up there. Uh, I hope I'm going to make it. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, first, let me apologize. Let me apologize for being late. Uh, number three, let me apologize for looking like this. Uh, I taken my cassock to the dry cleaners, and the agreement was that I'm going to fetch it on Monday at four o'clock. I was at the dry cleaners on Monday at four o'clock until Monday a quarter to five. My cassock was still not ready. That's when I said, I've got to leave. I've got something else to do. So I apologize for being late and I apologize for looking a bit like a hobo. Uh, so the soul, the seeds of God, how many of you at times, not in a morbid, strange way, but how many of you think, think of death, think of your death in a particular way from time to time? It happens, ne? Uh, and what is death? How would you define death? Death is the separation of the body and the soul. So when one dies, it means that the body and soul uh, they, they, they part ways. So this automatically preempts something. It means that a human person is a composite of two things, of body and soul. Let's look at the body. What is, what is the body? It's, it's this gift that God has given us, a way of you and I to communicate, to get to, to, get to know each other. Some people adore their bodies. You see it via their Instagram. Some people don't really care much for their body. They don't take care of it, uh, which leads to, to illnesses and, and, what, and what have you. But nevertheless, it's, it's a gift of God. We should try to take care of it as, as, much, as, as much as we can. For some Christ, Christian extremists, they look at the body in a, in a negative way. It's almost the body is, is a jail. It's a jail that, that has locked up, that has locked up the soul. For a long time in our own church, there were people who thought like that, that the body should be punished. Remember those who used to flag themselves? Yes, it was the, the, the idea was the body is meant, is, meant, is meant to suffer, as if the body offers us nothing. If we've then agreed that we are a composite of body and soul, it means that the body 
maybe not as important, but fairly important as well. The way that we engage with each other is through our body. Uh, you can be a good-natured person, but that's only going to shine through your body, the way that we, 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 we relate to each other. Those people who have, been, who have been married, they saw the love of their lives, and the first thing they saw, even before they heard their voice, they saw their body, and they said, I could live with that for the rest of my life. And 50 years later, they are still, they are still happily married. So there's something important about, about the body as well. On Thursday this week, we're going to be celebrating Holy Thursday. We've got the institution of the sacrament of holy orders, of priesthood, but we've also got the institution of the Eucharist, where Jesus himself gives us of his body. Take and eat, take and drink. There is something about the body that is, that is important. There is something that, that, that we need to give value to. That is why it's so important that we take care of our bodies. You take care of your body, and your body is going to take care of you. So that's one, that's one composite of, 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 of a human person. St. John Paul II spoke a lot about the theology of, of the body. That's, that's an interesting read uh, if, 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 you, if you do get time. Whenever we go out and preach the gospel, we use our voices, our body. So it plays, I don't want to over, oversell it, but I'm sure you understand that there's something then important about, about the body. It's just not an envelope, as it were, that, that afterward is discarded. Interestingly enough, even after we die, there are certain rituals that are celebrated for our body. Because our soul is no longer there, but there's some respect that when it comes to the body, and it's quite interesting when you find you happen a lot when I was in St. Joseph's. If you go and have a funeral and uh, whoever has a relative who has died, they call and say, Father, does the body have to be there? Like, we are celebrating their funeral. It would be a good idea to bring them along as well. Uh, so the body plays, plays an important role even after, even after, we, after, after we die. And then we get the soul, what I want to speak about this evening. Disclaimer, this might be a bit, it's not hard, but it's going to be a bit chewy. Uh, so I had to sit down and research until I got to a point where I said, I think this is enough. Uh, so I hope that you're going to stick with me. If you don't, raise your hand, I'll explain. If I don't know, I'll tell you that I don't know as well. All right, so we've got St. Thomas Aquinas dubbed the doctor of divinity. Um, he speaks a lot about, about the soul, at least in the Catholic context. Now, to say St. Thomas Aquinas had a brilliant mind is, is an understatement. Literally, he's the doctor of divinity because he dealt with the things of God. Most of the things that we understand about the Eucharist, we get, we get from him. He had, he had a mind of minds. He had, he had a brilliant mind. Um, if you do get a chance, read his, his Summa as well. Um, it's very engaging about, about things that you don't really think about every day. So we're going to be using a lot of, of, his, of his chewy theology. St. Thomas Aquinas says that the soul is the form of the body. The soul is the form of the body. That is to say, the soul makes the human person to be human. All right. The soul is what makes the human person to be human. Now, what is a human person? Um, Thomas Aquinas says a human person is a rational animal. A rational animal. That's what separates us from plants and from other animals and we become sort of the highest, the highest form in the, in the animal kingdom because we are rational beings. We are a rational animal. Now, that is not to say that we are half animal and half rational, nor is it to say maybe we are, we are we're equal parts of spirit and matter. Rather, think of it like this. A human person is an embodied soul, an embodied soul or an ensouled body. The human person is one thing. It's, it's, it's one composite of body and soul. It perfectly comes together. Uh, an embodied soul 
or an, a soul that has been that has a body now the soul and the body don't have an equal footing they don't match each other like this the soul is primary so if you've got the human if you've got the body and the soul the soul is primary it's what gives this unity it's what makes it all stick together to sort of to sort of to sort of work the soul exists by virtue of itself and the body exists by virtue of the soul all right the, the soul exists by virtue of its very self and the body exists by by virtue of the soul if you like you can say that the soul actualizes the body the soul makes the human person to be human you and i are human because we've got we've got the soul that that lives that lives within us think of it like this when you when you die one day what's the first thing that you lose when you die you lose yeah that that, that human even when people refer to you and they refer to you as the body or as the corpse or as the human remains you are no longer even considered a, a, a person because there's a part that has that has already gone from you uh, some part is left yes but that unity that unity has has gone away the soul is the whole of the human body of the human person it's the human person in in its entirety it can't be parceled so the soul exists from the top of your head to the sole of your feet there's not a part that you say here's the soul here it it's it's all of you it's 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 it's, it's all of you uh, in latin the word soul is anima anima we get the english word animate so it's as if the soul animates the body uh, it, it it gives life to the body but not like not like a motor or, or or not like not like a battery in in a cell phone it it's the very life of it you don't the soul doesn't give power to the body I, I i hope you hear what i'm saying it doesn't give power to the body but it makes the body to become alive it's what makes the human person to be a human person the soul makes the body to be an actual living person who performs actions that are proper to human to human beings think of it as a foundation think of it a foundation that is required for human existence the soul is it's almost beyond us the soul doesn't necessarily make us alive the soul is alive that is why if you think of things like capital punishment think of a man who goes into into a school with an automatic rifle and kills 60 kids that are about 6 years old we all going to say that's a monster he doesn't he doesn't deserve he doesn't deserve to live and from from our human aspects it it only makes sense he should he should he should die as well uh gk chesterton says that if you kill a murderer the number of murderers remain the same if you kill a murderer the number of murderers remain the same it's because they've got that soul you see it's because they've got that 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 that, that preciousness that that part of of god himself a living part a living part of him that continually that constantly almost forces him to do good almost forces him to desire what is right but this part of him is also made up of of this body which at time pulls in the opposite direction and at times it's easier to listen to the body because the body gives immediate satisfaction the body you don't have to put in a lifetime investment you put in a little now you get a little now you put in a little now you get a little now as for the soul think of it as a longer investment and you and i are not very patient when it comes to that and you see now my dear friend that is what 
God cares so much about in you and I. That, that living part within us, that part that even when this body is as precious as it is, when it gives up and returns to, to the dust that it was formed, there's a part of us that almost lives forever and is going to return to God. Now it's either going to return to the joys of heaven to be one with, with its creator or Jesus tells us that it can also go to eternal fires where there'll be crying and gnashing of teeth. And there was a professor in the seminary who would scare us with that. In his exams he'd say, brothers, there will be crying and gnashing of teeth and those who do not have teeth, they shall be provided. Uh, so there'll be certainly gnashing of teeth. So that's... That's why you and I come here. That's why you and I have a relationship with that man. That's why you and I try to change this world for, to, be, to be a better place. Because you see, God cares about the soul. It's as if that is where he's enthroned. That's that when, when one day when that division takes place, not to be morbid, but doesn't it bother you guys that one day we've got to die? And one day it's just going to have to poof or end. Uh, I don't think about it a lot, but I think about it fairly. And sometimes you get a mini depression to think that in the midst of all of this, in the midst of all of this, I'm going to one day leave all of this uh, to it all. But that's then where it's so important then to take care of the soul. Because all of this is so, is so finite. It's going to be here for, for, for a moment and then it's going to go away. But St. Paul says to us that, that what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, he said, it's not even put into, into the human imagination of what God has prepared for those who love him. So what God has prepared for the soul. I'm going to end with a story. Yeah, it's ending time anyway. Um, a man, a man had his body and his soul were having a conversation. And the body says to the soul, no, the soul says to the body, you know, body, you, you are so lucky. You've got, you've got life as, as you like it. The body says, why do you say that? He says, look, just look at you. You eat whatever you want to eat. You drink whatever you want to drink. You sleep in the most comfortable of beds. You, you are taken care of. You are dressed in the most expensive suits. You don't have to worry a thing about you. If a pimple that is growing, that is not, see, that is not understood, they rush and they take care of it to make sure that it's not something that, that might kill you in the future. You've, you've, got, you've got everything. And you've, got, you've had about 60 odd years of, of, of a good life. And the body says, yeah, well, I think I've had life easy. What's your point? The soul says, well, I worry because after we part ways, I don't know where I'm going. You see, he says, body, you are supposed to, to feed me as well. There are things that I need for my own nourishment. He says, I can't remember the last time you went to church. I can't remember the last time you did a good deed for someone. I can't remember the last time you did something that just, that just feeds me except your, your very self. He says, even at your death, when you die, you're probably going to have an extravagant funeral and people are going to buy bunches of roses for you. He says, but I fear that I'm going into a dark place. And he says, the saddest thing is that your journey is going to end there and my journey is going to have to continue. That's why it's so important that we take care of our souls. That when we are given moments to talk to confession, we do that. That we can, when we do spiritual reading, we do that. If you suffer from um, insomnia, like I do at times, read the Bible. It does two things for you. It nourishes you with God's word and it gets you sleepy as well. So that works. If you ever you feel, uh, don't, some people are going to say, let me watch a bit of Netflix. It's going to get me a bit drowsy. Read the Bible. It does, it does two things in one. It also takes care though of that seat of God, of where God resides in, in you, in you and I, of that part that is going to return to God, to God someday. Yes, the body is important, but the body is finite. There's a much more precious thing in you and I 
that is infinite and that we continually have to take care of. That we continue have to take care of. And God freely gives us that nourishment. Thank you so, so much. I hope there's not a lot of questions because I'm also a bit as confused. Okay, Albie's already got a hand up. Thank you, Father Madusi, for being here Thank you. and for this interesting talk. Um, I hear you, and I always think of the saying, my soul glorifies the Lord. And I always think what I was taught when I was young, that it's important to read your Bible because as you pick that book up, you're almost scaring Satan away. Mm. You're almost showing him that he's not, you will not succumb to him. Today's world, everybody says, I can just do it on my cell phone. And I worry about that. I wonder, like, how can that be a weapon against Satan? Because I almost feel as good as a cell phone is in certain senses, it's, to me, opening the Bible is probably the greatest gift that we can give our, our God. I don't know if you have an answer for that. Mm -hmm. I do, yes. Um, I, I, I do. And I'm with you there. Uh, I, I'm with you there. The Bible is important because not only is it God's word, but the Bible is, it's living. It's, it's, the, living, it's the living word of God. So there is... There is something about, about, about having a copy of the Bible. I hope we all have copies of the Bible. You see, as Catholics, we, because we've got that lectionary that just makes things so much easy, we tend to stick to, to, to that, and we lose the roots of actually owning a Bible. Every family, at least every, at least every family should own a copy of the Bible. That is the living, the living word of, of, of God. I hear your concern as well about uh, about about people uh, reading it from 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 uh, from from their cell phones. Bishop Robert Barrett, uh, he says he's speaking about the evolution of of technology. He says back in the day Jesus used to preach about the birds, and today we are tweeting about Jesus. So it's almost as if. If fairly used, technology does have does have does have its 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 place its place within within us. I wouldn't throw my toys out the basket if you've got a Bible app on your phone, but I would be a bit worried if you don't have that Bible app as well as as well as a copy of of of, of the of, of of the of the of the Bible of the Bible itself. Uh, I'm not sure if I get you there. Partly. Any more questions? Going once. Going twice. There's a question. Not, n not so much a question, just a bit of a statement. I suppose the youngsters, I know James has been talking quite a bit about the youngsters and how they think these days, but I suppose nowadays when they, when they come up with what they identify as there's a clear split between what is in the soul and what is in the body. So mm -hmm. maybe they're actually onto something. We shouldn't be that worried because it'll be rectified at some stage. <laughs> I like your optimism that someday it's going, to, it's going to fix itself. Well, to... There are some, there are some fundamental truths of life. Uh, and... and we reach those truths in different ways, but nevertheless, they are they are they are they are, funda they are fundamental they are fundamental truths. Um, and sometimes we we don't really reach there. We don't really have all the answers. Uh, but if we at least are facing in that in that direction, uh, what I was speaking about last last week last week Monday. Uh, if, if we listen to, 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 to that what is within us and, and it gives us maybe not an exact an exact course to follow but a general a general direction uh, you and well maybe let me not speak for you I'm a sinner I'm, I, I, I sin I'm, 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 I'm weak 
not necessarily proud of it, but I know that I'm a sinner. At the same time, I know that I'm loved utterly. That, that Jesus Christ loves us so much. That is why, that is why, you know the, 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 the song Amazing Grace? That's, that's sort of, a, that's sort, that's bordering on, on heresy. You are, you, you are never a wretch. You are never saved as, as a wretch. There's, there's nothing about you that is totally, totally uh, distractive or distracted. As much as this body can, can, can have done the worst of things, remember that you've got a part of you that belongs to God. So Jesus didn't come to save people who are totally in, in, in total darkness and the door, the door was totally shut. It, it's precisely because he loved us that he saw that there was something in us to save, that he, that he comes down, that he comes down to, 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 to save us. So, yeah, how, how we approach some, 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 of, some, of, those, some of those truths. Uh, at times, it's at the end. It's right at the end when we look back and we say, ah, I was wrong over there, I was wrong over there. But Catholic theology also teaches us that, well, at least for those of us who are, who are, who are pastors, that we err on the side of right. So when, when, when we get chastised one day, we must get chastised that you did this not that you did not do this. So we always err on the side of, of, of what is kind, of what is right, of what is, of what is, going, to give, is going to give life to, to God's holy people. Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, these, okay, Father Stephen. I'm just trying to Something that I, I grapple with is um, we talk about the spirit and we talk about the soul. Yeah. How would you define the two? I was, I was and hoping... It's not, and I'm, I'm not... Okay. I'm asking as a searching question. Yeah. Because okay. I grapple, and I, from what I've read, it kind of goes between the two. I have my own thinking, but I'm always doubtful that it's what God's thinking. Yeah. Uh, I looked at that, and I, I wanted to speak on that, but soon it just took its own direction. What, what I was reading explaining the difference between the soul or rather the similarities between the soul and the spirit. This guy decided to go on the extreme. He said think about it as, think about it in the image of demon, of Satan and demons. You've got as if Satan is the godfather, as you like, the highest of them all. And then you've got demons, little evil spirits that sort of, that sort of, comes from this great one, but are not, but are not exactly the same. Uh, that is when I said, no, this, this, is, this is getting a bit, uh, a bit to, to the left. What, don't quote me on this, but speaking, what I, what I, could, I, I, I could presume is that when we speak about them, we almost speak about them interchangeably. Uh, but for the Stephen, you have you have a soul, right? Like all of us here have got have got a soul. But there's also a a spirit about 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 Father Stephen that makes you unique, even though you've got you've got a body and soul like the rest of us. But there's there's a part of you that is that is so distinct, that is so different, that makes that makes all of us like you, but all in a in a in a in a in a, in a different way. Uh, it comes from the soul, but it's, it uniquely belongs belongs to you. Personality, maybe I don't know if you'd, if you'd give it another word. That is just see. That is just that is just me. Uh, I hope that takes you somewhere a bit. And this is not to contradict you at all. I sure. believe it's a it's a mystery that it's unfolding. Yeah. But when I hear you and I agree with you, but then you think of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, it almost feels that that's a God thing. And the soul is still a God thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. but inferior to okay. the spirit. Okay. But that's where I think, I think it's the holy dialogue, which is good to, to keep going. Um, you know, what part of me is God? What part of me mm. is me? What mm. part of me is God mm. me? What, mm. You know, it, I think it's the, it's the dialogue, the, the juggling of reality that keeps us on our toes. Yeah. Thank you. And I think spirit soul goes into that mystery, valid, 
deepening conversation on our journey. That's, that's worth, worth thinking about. Okay. I've got two more hands at the back. Thank you, Father. Good evening, Father. Thank you. So I've been doing some research for a family member on what to do with the cremains. Mm. And I've read what the doctrine of the faith says. But as doing the research, the church was never for cremation. Mm. It came out of financial necessity. What is your view on the death of the body, burial or cremation? Okay. Thank you. Uh, in 2016, uh, I lost my grandmother. Uh, one that uh, she told me everything I basically knew about life. Before she died, she had written everything that she wants to happen at the funeral. One of the things that she wanted was cremation. Now think of a typical Zulu family with this idea of cremation. Everyone's like, what, what was she thinking? What, what, does, what, does, what does this all mean? But we had, we had, to, we had, to, we had to, follow, to follow her wishes. Personally, I do not have a problem with cremation. This is how I think of it. Cremation does in an hour what the earth will do to your body in 10 years. Ultimately, it's going to, it's going to be almost, almost, almost the, 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 the same thing. Um, if for whatever reason a person was buried and they have to be exhumed, uh, and probably you'd re, if you want to rebury them, you can actually take their remains and put them into the same box as you use, as you use for, for, for cremation. So ultimately we go, we, we end up in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the same, in the same place. But the important thing is those remains, because you see, even after, even after they are cremated, they still hold a special, a special, a special uh, value. Uh, and it's not just, it's not just a, a, a religious thing. It's a criminal offense to violate a dead body. It's as if there's something that, that is seen to, to, still have, to still have virtue in that. That is why then the Catholic Church is not going to allow you to uh, to scatter ashes because they have to sort of uh, remain in, 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 one, uh, in one setting as, 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 as it were. So to answer your question personally and, and the church as you, as, you, as you have eventually seen, uh, I, don't, I don't have a problem with, with, with cremation. Now, here's the thing though. If you want a funeral and you are going to cremate your loved ones, the church says, what must come to the, to the church for the funeral? The body, not the cremated remains. So you don't go cremate and then you come back and say we have the funeral. We have the funeral first. And then as a, as, as a, as a way of, of high, well, I don't know what's the right term to use, but of, of putting away those, those remains. It's either you cremate them or you, or you bury them. All right. Does that give a bit of light? Thank you so much. My good sir. Uh, hello. Yeah, um, good afternoon, Father. Um, good evening. I came a bit late, so my question is just on the back of Father Stephen's um, guest question, um, especially the, the bit that I, could, that, I could, uh, that I could get was reality. Mm. Um, and lately, there's three things that I'm grappling with. The first one is um, suffering. Um, the second one is um, the existence, our, our existence. Our existence. Yes, like why, why, why are we here? And, 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 and I think reality. Um, and all of that accumulates to, um, you know, lately if you follow especially um, computer scientists with AI and stuff. There was a documentary that I was listening, not a documentary, a podcast that I was listening to. And this, this guy says, um, one of the big thinkers at, at Google, he says they were running an experience um, just before um, um, ChatGPT became the big thing. Mm. So they were running an, experim an experience where 
they had, um, I don't know if you know these, these things that they have, I don't know if they still have it at the entrance of malls where you, you have this hand that drops and you have to pick up a, a, a um, what you call it? A toy. Yeah. Yes. So they were running something similar like that. So they were training this artificial thing to, to do that um, without really teaching it to do anything. So it was just a series of um, trial and error and for them to see eventually whether the, the hand was going to be able to pick up. So he says after about a year, eventually one, one evening he says he was on his way to his office and then the hand actually managed to pick up a yellow ball. And um, the striking thing here is that he says what that moment reminded him of is the moment where his son um, again, th here's another thing that's quite striking. As children, we have these um, square thing where you have to put a star, a square, and he says, what you don't teach, usually you don't teach children how to, the, the circle goes here, it's through trial and error, eventually you, you figure out where, you know, where, what goes where. So he says, and this is, the, I guess, the first line of question to you. He says, not having thought that artificial being how to pick up the ball and for it to figure out eventually how to do that, he believes that um, he believes that these things, and this is the word that he uses, are sentient being, they are alive. Okay. So but okay. Mm. <laughs> so then the question that I have or what I'm grappling with is that if we are this body and if we have a soul and and since we are catholic and we believe god exists um where do we put where do we put um where do we put ai as 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 spiritual people i think we believe that there are certain things that we cannot explain i can be here and i think of my lucian next thing my phone ring and his father Malusi ringing me how do you explain that you know what i mean I c there's so many things that are out there that we can't explain okay and i think someone said about the truth how do you explain what is the truth what is reality um and another thing that ties into suffering which is to what father stephen was saying or at least the way i connected is that for me Reality or suffering is accepting our daily reality, you know, accepting and bearing and bearing our reality as, as a form of suffering that we're offering to, to God. There was a meditation that I was reading um, that, was, that was saying, my fiance is saying that you're talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it in her eye. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> But, but I, yeah, it's a lot in my mind, so I'm just trying to sure. put all of that, and that's why I'm here tonight, I guess. And I'm losing my train of thought now. Um, I lost it. You distracted me. Um, yeah, I think let me just leave it there. But basically, how do you reconcile all of that? Um, I don't know. I want to hear your take and anyone else that maybe uh, can enlighten me. Thank you so much. All right. Sure. Thank you for that. I'll answer the best that, 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 that I can answer. AI is taking the world by storm. You are right. Uh, it's, it's taking the world by storm. But it's also in the name. Ne? It's also in the name. It's artificial intelligence. It's, you, can't, you can't say that it's alive. It's, it's, it's artificial intelligence. And I understand the example that, 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 that he's making with, 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 with that arm. Now, one of the things that I said, maybe, because it was right at the beginning, maybe you, you, you hadn't arrived. I spoke about rationality, uh, us being rational, rational beings. Uh, let me try to give you that, uh, that quote from Thomas Aquinas. It says, a rational animal, um, not to say that we are, we are half-half, but that we are, we are a composition of, of, of both. Now, if I, if I remember St. Thomas from what I did in philosophy, he's going to speak about rational or intellect as the knower knowing that he knows. 
It's the knower knowing that he knows. Artificial intelligence knows, but it does not know that it, it, it knows that. Um, do, you, do you get what that? Right? You and I can go outside of ourselves and look and, and, look, and look back at, 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 at ourselves. I think for me that's where the difference between artificial reality, uh, artificial intelligence and, uh, and, and rationality is, 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 going, is going to be at. You certainly can't say it's it's sentient that it's that that it, that it experiences uh, things things like 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 you uh, you like you and I. Its output is always going to be based on on what on what on what on what on what it receives. Uh, suffering. You are right. The way that you expect uh, that 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 you you explained that you explained uh, suffering. There's a movie, um, Cry the Beloved Country. I don't know if you've, if you've watched it, guys. Um, when, 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 that, when that priest gets to Johannesburg and he, and he meets that other priest, there's something that he says to him. He says to him, uh, I don't think that Jesus suffered to take away our suffering. I think Jesus suffered to teach us how to suffer. Uh, so it's as if it's always going to be a part of a part of our of our of our human of our human existence. One person made an example of a piano. It says to get the best tune out of a piano, you've got to play the white keys and the black keys. Uh, they they has they they sort of have to have to uh, 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 be there. At times, there are sufferings that 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 other people experience that we just can't explain. That you and I just can't, can't put into words. Just like their successes and riches. Do you know, do you have an idea how rich people are out there? That you can't explain that as well. So there's, there's one extreme that's that side that we can't explain, and there's one extreme that's that side that, uh, that, we, that we can't explain. And maybe we don't, we don't really have to explain it. Maybe we don't, we don't really have to, 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 to explain it. Existence is going to is going to go back to 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 to, to what I saying. The no one knowing that 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 he knows the the ability the ability of of one going outside going outside of of of, of, of himself. The ability to ask to ask such such questions to to ponder on on your own reality on your on your on your on your on your own existence. Truth. Finally, ask truth. Uh, Pontius Pilate. He asked, what is truth? The truth was staring him in the face. I am the truth, the way, and, and, and the life. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I don't uh, tongue twist uh, my, myself. But, do you know, ever met a person who they are not they are not holy they are not a saint but there's there's a quietness there's a goodness about them there's there's almost an energy that that that, that draws you to them they they're in touch with with their reali their reality they're in touch with their with their faith they are consistent in, in the things they do people who inspire us from 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 a distance I think for me, when, 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 when you want to speak about, about ultimate truth, is what, is what God wants for us in that space. When, when we've got this, this, perfect, this perfect balance of, of who we are, uh, including at times our own, our own faults, our own, our own limitations of understanding that at times, at times we, 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 we miss the mark. But we... We are comfortable with that. We live in that, and we and we come we come to him as that. The the Pharisees. I don't want to go into preaching. The Pharisees. Jesus always fought with the Pharisees because of one thing. They spoke one thing, and they lived something that is that was totally different. And Jesus was saying that there needs there needs to be a, co a coherency between the two. For me, if, if ever you're going to to live. A life of, of truth. Maybe that's that's the balance we're gonna we're gonna we are gonna have to, to strike now. That's just that's just me. Thank you. Any more questions? Um 
I don't want to hold you up, but what about the saints yes. who don't decompose? Okay. <laughs> uh, talk about a curve point. Talk about talk about a, a, a curve point. Uh, it's true. It's 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 true. But on when we celebrate All Saints, we are, we are in All Saints. We celebrate those saints that don't compose, don't decompose. But those saints that are gonna decompose as uh, as time goes on as well. Because when we celebrate All Saints, it's not only those who are who are canonized. It's about it's about all of us uh, as well who try to to live the best the best life that Jesus wants us to live, the best the best truth that that we can live. And unfortunately, some of us are going to are going to 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 decompose. There are some things that. I suppose are going to remain a mystery, uh, or maybe as as time goes on, God is going to reveal exactly uh, exactly what 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 uh, what what that what that means. Uh, so I don't I don't have a straight answer for you. I'm sorry, uh, and I didn't even I didn't even think of that. Thank you so much. It is. Many, many of them, they, they, they don't, they don't, they don't decompose. And people who are not Catholics don't believe that. They don't believe that there are some people who God, who God has, has, has preserved uh, in, in, in the states that they, that they were in. All right. Are we happy? Well, not happy. Are we semi-happy? Can you, can you deal with, with all of that? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Baba Stephen, for, for, for the invite. And thank, and thank you guys for, for this. Remember the story about the guy who had a problem with the body and the soul? These are the things that we do to nourish our souls. Né? These are the things that we do so that we become, we become better, better Christians. So that when the body does go away someday, as unfortunately it will, we've got a healthy soul. We've got a soul that's, that can still go on and, and, and live forever uh, with God. Thank you so much and God bless. Okay, thank you, Father Malusi. You're actually not done as yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> but thank you for such an inspiring message, and we appreciate you for sharing your incredible wisdom with us. So we have a small token of appreciation for you to say thank you from the All Saints family, and it also comes with an invitation to visit us again. <laughs> Even willing. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. And I am going to ask you to close in prayer. Sure, not a problem. Please rise. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, our loving Father, we thank you once more for this opportunity that you've given us. An opportunity to learn more about you, to learn more about our very selves. We thank you for calling us to, to be your children. And that even at times as, as we disappoint and we walk away from your light, you continue to see, call us back. As on this holy week, we prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of the passion and the resurrection of your son. Give us hearts and minds that are focused on him and on his holy will. Bless us as we make our way home. Protect us from all that could harm us physically and spiritually. Give us a good night's rest. And may we rise tomorrow to bless you in another day. And we make this our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Almighty God bless and protect you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We wish you all a blessed Holy Week. Please do join us for tea and coffee. Thank you.